Hi, it's Mike again. I want to show you something that's new for CS5 and uh, it has to do with selecting and it's one of the probably the, one of the better features that I've seen come aboard to the Photoshop program in, in many years. Um, it's called Refine Edges and what, what happens is you start with a loose selection and you go into this, this dialog box and you can make some slight changes to it to get a better selection uh, out of the image that you're going for. So like in this case right here we have an image of a woman and as you see here we have all this hair on the edges that you know basically those strands of hair that we want to include in our selection where you know the curly hair down the bottom left hand corner you know little pieces coming out we want to keep all that. So if we're trying to select this person and move her to another part of another image I want to have some better controls on getting that done. And if I had to go in and trace around each of that, that, that takes so much time. So Photoshop has, has made some adjustments. And if you remember in the past, if you've worked with previous versions, it, they basically retooled the extract command and incorporated a variety of features from the extract command from the earlier versions into this new feature. So the first thing I, had to, I have to do is I'm going to have to select a portion of her. So I'm going to try to get majority of it selected around her head and so forth. And since there's a nice little contrast between that and the background, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Um, it's over here in our toolbox, the fourth tool down. And I'm just going to start basically painting <laughs> around and it adds to the selection. And that's what we learned in one of our first videos on selecting. And as you see here, it just it's kind of it's like a paintbrush, and you're just going in and, and trying to get some things to this. Now you can go back in, in certain areas where if you wanted to, you can actually click to add to the selected area. Uh, you don't have to hold down your mouse because some areas you might find that it added too much or, or took uh, not enough. Also, you can use the options bar up here. You can subtract from the selection by clicking on the third button. And you can click on a certain area to subtract that area. Again, you also have the add. It's by on by, by default, the add to selection. And if I took this image over right now, if I copied this and, and moved it over, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do a control C, command C on the Mac. And I'm going to paste it into this image right here with a control V, command V as in Valentine for the Mac. You can see here that the edges are not the greatest around the hair. It's not as natural. Okay, so we're going to go back. I'm going to delete this layer that it brings in by dragging to the trash can on the layers panel. And I'm going to come back here. I'm going to refine those edges to make it more realistic. And on the options bar, we have the I'm going to move this over here to a little bit to the right so we can see this. And the feature that we have here, which is kind of cool, is that we have different views that we can choose from based on what we're trying to do. For example, by default, it took us to where we can see these little checkerboard, and that means basically it's transparent. So that's what we're trying to do is basically select the person so I don't need to see the background. But if I click on the drop down list here, I have different views I can choose from. For example, I can have it so I can see it on a black matte background. So I can see little issues. And sometimes it's easier if you put on a black matte background that you can see where you need to work with. Um, you can also go up and choose Marching Ants, which is basically the selection. You can see what is selected and what is not. Um, I like to stay on, on layers because I can basically see the edges and if I need to, I'll go back to Marching Ants or Reveal Layers so I can see where some extra hair I might need to add to my selected area. So we have different views to choose from, and which is great. But now we're going to have to, you can see some edges around here that we have to work with. And the key thing here is the edge detection section, is to increase what we call the radius. The radius basically is telling Photoshop to look at these edges and say, okay, look at the contrast between the hair and the background. And I only want you to bring and select the hair based on the contrast and the radius. The larger the radius, the more it looks in that area, the border. 
And so what, is, what you're doing is you're telling Photoshop, hey, look in this big area and you determine what the contrast is. So sometimes you need that smaller be, to be a little bit smaller. So if I increase the radius up, watch what happens here. Notice the edges start getting a little, look like softer, you know, going around. Now I want to show you the, what the radius looks like. I want to show you that it is a border. I'm going to click on the show radius checkbox up here. And you can see it's a little border going around the whole image. So that whole border there, you're telling Photoshop, look at the image and you determine, Photoshop determines what to select and what not to select. Now I'm going to turn on what we call the smart radius because it's going to look and say, hey, I notice the shirt down here is, is all blue. It has a different, a better contrast than the background. Hair is all, it's all different shades in that. So when I turn on the smart radius, watch what happens to the border. It gets smaller around the shirt and it's a little bit larger around the hair because it's different shades, different contrast. So Photoshop can detect that. It knows that. I'm going to turn off the show radius so we can see the actual image. And once you do that, it's just the key is to find the right radius. If you go too much, you're going to get some uh, transparency issues around the edges. You're going to see through the shirt <laughs> if you put it on a different background. So you, you want to find the right radius amount. Then you go around and you do some fine tuning with this brush that's right here to the left of the edge detection called the Refine Radius Tool. And for example, there's so much black right here from the background, what I'll do is I'll click and paint in that area and it disappears. So I can go around and I can paint in a certain area and it's going to look and say, hey, oh, I see what you're talking about with the hair and it just removes anything from the background and leaves the hair in its place. You can just click or you can drag and paint and it'll do a better job of cleaning it up. So let's take a look. I'm going to change the view here to marching ants. See how little teeny areas around the edges. Now some people say, well, do can I keep uh, like these little strands of hair going up the top? It's probably not needed because it's probably not going to be seen as much but we're doing a great job of getting around the edges and doing a little more cleaning, uh, especially you can see right through it. So I'm going to go back on layers. And the key here is once you get that selected area, you use the Refine Radius tool to kind of clean up those edges. And if you still have some issues, then you can start working with adjusting the edge options here. Uh, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll apply a little feather option, but just remind yourself that where your edges are, it's going to apply a feather, so that means it's going to be uh, semi-transparent on those edges. Now, it's great if you're going to bring it together with a collage and you're going to bring images uh, on top of each other, but if you just want it to be in a black background or a white background, then it might not work, <laughs> you know, because you're going to have a softer edge with the feathering. So if you increase the contrast, watch what happens here. Look at the edge of the hair. See how it gets more detailed. That's what the contrast is. Watch what happens when I increase the feathering. See, it gets so soft, you get all this transparent, and you see checkerboard in between the, the shirts and that. That's because it's transparent. We don't want that. Now, you might increase it up a little bit, but you don't want to go too much on that part. So I want to click OK here. So it got it all, it put the marching ants in. Now I'm going to do a control C, command C on the Mac. I'm going to click on my photo filter one image up here. I'm going to paste it. Control V, command V for the Mac again. Now take a look at those edges. You can see to the background. I'm going to do um, edit free transform to make it a little bit smaller. And as I do this, look at, as I, if I move this around, look at especially down here in the bottom left-hand corner 
of her hair. See how you can see the water and the trees behind it. And that has done a great job. You know, in previous versions of Photoshop, it was a little bit harder to do. Now they made it easier using the refine edges options. So experiment with that. See what you can do with that. It's an amazing tool.